Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Love is Funny podcast. I'm Demarie, also known as DJ. I'm Janelle, also known as Janelle. You didn't. <laughs> you don't need an also known as if you also known as just like your name. I can need whatever I want. Okay. Anyway, this is the Love is Funny podcast, like we said, and this is our very first episode. We know that most people want to wait and they want to like celebrate that, you know, their 100th episode or, you know, however, episode 200, whatever. But we're going to go ahead and celebrate episode number one. Are you ready? Woo! That was that was the celebration. Uh, that's all we had because we forgot balloons. We actually didn't forget. We uh, just never had them. But anyway, like we said, this is uh, this is our first episode. Um, so we figured on this episode, we just kind of give y'all introduction into who we are because to some of y'all, we may be new. Uh, so I guess we can, you know, go with ladies first. Janelle, you want to introduce yourself? No. You can go first. But it's, it's literally like... They always talking about like you know. I know, but as my husband, I'm supposed to follow you and you lead. I, I know, but like t- the chivalrous thing to do would be. Well, thank you. Now go ahead. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I'm Demarie again, also known as DJ. Uh, I am a well. First and foremost, um, I'm a husband, as y'all can see. Uh, she liked this, so she put a ring on it. You <laughs> feel me? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm a father of two right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, father of two. Uh, I'm a I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, I'm an actor. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, the phone makes me cough. <laughs> okay. <that's, laughs> it was not that long ago that that would have got you kicked out the building. Okay. Now, this ain't six feet. I'm going to need you to get it together by the end of this podcast or we got a problem. Anyway, back to my introduction. Like I was saying, uh, stand-up comedian, uh, I do a little bit of modeling, you feel me? Uh, Actor, um, writer of stand-up comedy, and I've written some short films. I'm not going to call myself a full screenwriter yet because I got a lot to learn, but I am that also. Uh, And a photographer, and I used to be a dishwasher at Red Lobster. Now it's your turn to introduce yourself. Oh, um, no. Again, I'm Janelle. I am a wife of DeMarie now, two and a half weeks. And I'm a nurse. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. <coughs> you're sitting on the couch, you're watching YouTube, and your life is passing you by. You keep procrastinating. Maybe I'll subscribe next week, or maybe at the end of the video. No, do it right now. You can watch this after work or before work. Go do what you need to do to get these laughs and this entertainment. You spend all day on YouTube and social media anyhow. Why not subscribe to a channel that's gonna help you in your future? Pick up your thumbs and push the button. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. Ew, at least I covered my mouth though. You supposed to be the healthiest one here. <laughs> that's what's killing me. What's going on? <laughs> it's the phone. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm allergic. Well, then I don't have an excuse if I go. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, I'm Janelle. I'm a nurse. So if we talk about health care, um, that will be coming from me. I'm also working on my master's degree in nursing education because I want to educate the public on health care, especially as colored black people. But, yeah, I'm not that fun to meet me in real life. <laughs> okay. First of all. Who going to meet you in real life? Because who, you know, I told myself I was going to come on here and not cuss. So we're going to say, who the fornication is you winking at? It, that's my problem. <laughs> but yeah, she she is way more than that, as y'all going to get to see. She uh, she She's also a comedian. She swear at the house. Because I be on stage telling jokes. She swear she funny. I write his jokes. It. Okay. What you can't do is put, because people will run with that. I'm, I'm just be, kidding. I don't write the jokes. Oh, my God. Yeah, Take but, a joke. Oh, that was a, okay. <laughs> that was a good joke. Cause, anyway, but yeah. So you will see that she is more than that. She mentioned like she'll be the one that's uh, going to be talking about some of the health stuff when it does come up. We don't know we'll get to that stuff today, but we will be talking about a number of different things. We're going to be discussing uh, relationships, obviously, because that's what we in a relationship. Uh, what else are we going to discuss? Uh, uh, what some current events? Uh, 
what else what else did we talk about we discussed this by the way before this but uh it went over my head or through one ear and out the other but just any topic eventually we would like to get to the point of if it's like q a like if people like us and they want to talk to us and we can answer questions that way um just whatever love is love is fun love is extra love is boring anything kind of because we're just love is patient love is kind love does not you you know the bible verse that they 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 understand what I'm Oh. Was. We will talk about the Lord on here. Oh yeah, definitely. We got to cuz that's the reason why we here. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? That's why we all here. Facts. So yeah, y'all going to get that too. Um Yeah, so we're going to make sure we stay away from any sensitive I'm still holding uh, this. Oh yeah. Yeah, we don't want you coughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, so basically we're going to talk about anything y'all want to talk about, anything we find on the internet that's <laughs> interesting. We're going to talk about ourselves. Um, all that. So with that being oh, go ahead. And not anything. Because some stuff we just don't want to talk about. We don't want to dabble in unnecessariness. For sure don't want to talk about politics. I know it's about time to vote and all that. But yeah, we, we don't, don't wanna, do that. No, we don't we don't want to do that. That's boring. But yeah. So our president is God. <laughs> our car is black. No, no. My president is black. My Lambo blue. Well, I do think that Jesus is black because he had woolly hair and feet of bronze. I think that Jesus is black and I think that Jeezy is black. Well, you should know that Jeezy is black. Anyway, so look, that's all That's all the or stuff. Or is he we, white because he was a snowman? Wait, Jeezy. It's iced out. Wait. So when you carry the one. All right. All right. <laughs> Shout out Jeezy if you ever watch our podcast. Exactly. Because So Icy is like our favorite song. Yeah. He's Jeezy. I'm Gucci. And we don't listen to Boo. We just cut that no. part off. No offense. No. And it's weird because because you my boo. Did you get it? That was me trying to be like cute. Yeah, but it wasn't a good one. I was, I was trying to lay some game down. We cut off the boo, but I'm your boo. So you cut me off. That's not a good one. Try again. Okay. So next. Okay, so anyway, so we talked about what we're going to be talking about. So let's get to what we're here to talk about today, which, again, is uh, is more of an introduction to us. And as you guys can see, we are married now. And as she said, it's only been two and a half weeks. So we figure uh, just as a way for you guys to, you know, get to understand us more and how we are and w- why we are how we are and how we got to this point. Um, we just figure we'd introduce y'all and walk y'all through, like, you know, how we met, how we got together. Uh, all those different types of things, um, and I guess, yeah, I guess we'll let you we'll let you go first. What is your version of how? Because we, we often clash on how the story go. So, uh, what is your version of how we met? I posted a story saying I wanted a YouTube boyfriend, and he sent me an application, and now we're here. That's, I w- I would be <laughs> cool. Like, no, look, look, listen. I would be That's cool. That's part of it. I would be cool if that was like a different version of the truth but like that wasn't even like kind of the truth yeah it was i did say what you no because rem- you did no send me an no because remember 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 you came to one of my shows no i was doing really st- no remember you came to one of my shows and you was like can i get a picture but it was raining outside so i didn't have time i was like yeah whatever whatever and Later on, remember you followed me, and then you slid in my DM like, "Hey, it was me at the show," and I was like, "Shorty in the rain." And if anybody knows me, the only picture I ever took with any don't you celebrity or thereof is Big Sean. So no, I never asked you for a picture, and I have no pictures of Big Sean. So in that case, I never asked anyone. I never saw anyone. But, but that anyway, was, so that's what? how we got together because remember you was like, yo, the picture. And I was like, yo, actually, now that I'm looking at your pictures, I can picture us. No, so truthfully. Oh, now we want to get to the truth. Yeah. Truthfully. I hate working out. So one time I had a trainer. but I still followed him. I tried to support his business and share with other people. And then one time he posted, he posts people on his story. So one time I seen some like dark skinned boy, I was like, mm, he's cute. So me being me. Hold on, I, hold on, hold on. Let's start right there. Let's start right there. Um, 
who was the dark skinned boy? Or man, I mean, I mean, however you want to frame it, who was he? So he posted him. And I clicked, and he tagged this thing, so I clicked on his. But I think I had seen him a couple times on there before, but there was just one when he was, like, doing something like this or something. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so then I clicked on his page, and I went through the whole thing. I went back to his very first, first, first picture, which is probably, like, 2017. <laughs> I went through the whole thing. I saw that he had kids. I saw that he was engaged. Uh, that turned out to not be the truth. And so, I won't say every single detail because the Lord has reformed me. But I went back to Kyle. Um, and I was like, hey, he's cute. Bet you he's taken. And Kyle was like, I don't know. You should follow him. Because, of course, after going through the whole Instagram, I did not follow him. Because why? But so I was like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. I support black people. I didn't really think it was funny. If you watched our video from our wedding website, you would know. Because I watched everything in silence. I just want to stop right there. First of all. If the, I'm telling the story, why did it stop me? Because it's, it's my a, version. Okay, go ahead. I'll get to my version in a second. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, so then I went back and I followed him. And that was it. I moved on with my life. Yeah, so now the story picks up at at Kyle's where well where I was working because I was working out with Kyle as she said and um Kyle by the way this is K Lou fit to flex by the way uh you know one of the best trainers out here in Bakersfield so yeah so as she said Kyle um she said something to Kyle and by the way Kyle was a real one because Kyle knew that I was not actually engaged anymore and that I was now single Kyle knew that by the way when he said why did he say I don't know because it was not see this is see let me let me let me let me teach you something baby real quick. So you just got people lying for no, you no, because no, if you no, had no, it on no. your page, no, then no, why was it still no. on your page? Hey, listen here, baby. Four months listen later. Here, listen here. Um, when I tried to speak up in the middle of your story, you asked me not to. So I'm gonna need that same respect, baby. You feel me? No. So look, Kyle understands what's called guy code it was not his place to tell you yes or no it was only his place to come relay the information to be like yo as he did but i didn't tell him to relay the information as he 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 you didn't tell him to but you also didn't tell him not to so that means go tell my boy like yo it's this cutie based on what i said that i shall not say okay we're going to speak a lot about relationships and communication (laughs) The first rule is you don't cut people off and you listen, okay? I'm working on that. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So Kyle comes and he tells me at the end of our workout, like, hey, man, you know, the video I posted of you working out, um, you know, some people said some things. Uh, But the only person he told me said anything was Miss Janelle over here. And he showed me Janelle and I said, yo, I just noticed she followed me, but me, you know, I'm I'm waiting on her to post a story so that I can have something to like start conversation off of. Like if I see you making like stuffed bell peppers, I might slide in your DM like, yo, I love bell peppers. We should link. So <laughs> I was waiting on the story. But um, before that story came, I worked out with Kyle again and Kyle told me like, yo, she said something. You know, she can thought I you drink were cute. Water on here? Uh, it's your podcast. It's our podcast. Oh. You could, this is not the any of them other uh, radio shows or whatever. But yeah, so yeah, so he uh, told me about her. I saw her, and yeah, I went and I was like, "Hey, what's up?" And uh, we got to rapping, and that's how it happened. Um, by the way, this was a pandemic, so like the beginning of our relationship was like uh, April two thousand twenty. Yeah, April twenty twenty. So we we products of the pandemic. You feel me? Uh, yeah, so initially she wasn't really trying to see me in person because, as she said, she is a nurse and she does take care of her godparents who are older. And I had quit my new, like, favorite job because yeah. it's my godparents. Yeah, so, yeah, she wasn't really trying to see me, but, you know what I'm saying, obviously, <laughs> I mean, y'all see her, I'm trying to see her. <laughs> so I'm out here, you know what I'm saying, you got to be honest with you, I had game. I didn't have no game. No, because the real reason why I even agreed to seeing you 
But yeah, so I was like, sure, we can hang out. Yeah, mm-hmm. so the first time we hung out, uh, we basically, <laughs> I guess we stayed hanging out. We've been hanging out for two and a half years in a row because we, yeah, that we first, haven't stopped talking since. At all. So that first time we hung out was like, how long were we together? Like six or eight hours or something like that. Yeah. Eight hours. Is- a full-time work shift, you feel me? Six to eight hours. We was together all that time. And it was just like, uh, yeah, she was my, she was, okay. I know we've been going back and forth, but that's just how we play. But truthfully, she was like my best friend out the gate. And uh, I knew that we was going to be sitting here married one day. I didn't know we was going to be on this podcast. That was unpredictable. You might have predicted that more than I did. I definitely didn't because I don't even be like to be on camera like that. Yeah, but you also, the part about the YouTube application <laughs> That's I did not, say that. Yes, that's not how we met. But she did tell me like, oh, it's crazy how, you know, you make skits and do comedy because I was just saying I'm looking for a YouTube boyfriend. You going to be my YouTube boyfriend? And me still, you know, trying to. trying. To I didn't ask you to be my YouTube boyfriend. You sent me. I think I had posted that meme, that something. YouTube boyfriend, and then you like responded to it. Yeah, something made me go to my notes and really put together a YouTube boyfriend application. And send it to her. But these are all these are literally all jokes. The whole podcast thing was not even an idea. We both don't like like when it comes to like vlogging and pranks and all the things that you have to do on YouTube. No. It's not for us. Although we try to be like or starting like yesterday. We are gonna try to vlog and blog. Is that the same thing different? Because we were like, when we get old, we just want to have memories of it. Because we'll literally go someplace and have no pic. Our wedding, we have no pictures from our phone. Exactly. Our phones were not even with us at the wedding. They were. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So we're terrible. We're very live in the moment people. Yeah. Our honeymoon. Or just not have our phone. Our honeymoon, we took one picture the whole time. And it was like in a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, just because it was a phone booth, we took one picture. Yeah. Um, So at this time, we like, because it was a pandemic again, there was no uh, no restaurants open. We couldn't go to each other's houses just because it was old people there and other people obviously were. So we couldn't go to somebody's house and be like, who is this random person you got bringing? the? You brought the vid in my house. (laughs) So you can't. So you couldn't really have. uh, So our our first. What was that like? I don't know. Our initial introduction to dating was we literally sat in the car for them same six to eight hours, like almost daily. And at first it was like every three or four days and it was like every two or three days. And it was like, yeah, see, every day. Look, 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 look. When I do this voice, that means I'm, I'm about to I'm about to get real player. You feel me? So me keeping it player. I Look, fellas, look, just take notes. You feel me? If I start blowing in the microphone so they don't hear you. Nah, 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 baby. Look, listen, 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 because this is the truth. I told you this, too. Like, the reason it was every three or four days, you feel me, is because, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to irritate or be annoying. You feel me? Like now? Uh, So, no. Like now, but at the same time, like then. You feel me? So... I didn't want to be annoying and be like, yo, can I see you again tomorrow? Like, yo, yo, yo. She'd be all like, yo, this dude is clingy. Get him off me. Get him off my back. But now so, if you're not next to me, it's a problem. Yeah, I know. Because what I are know. you doing? I know. I'm just telling the story. But anyway, so yeah, then we, you know, is there anything else we need to tell in between that and the marriage? Anything important? Um... One thing we did do that we have uh, suggested or offered or told other people is we bought some cards. For, I got some from Amazon, and they have several. So it's like date night ones, but I got the like, intimacy ones, and it's not about sex. It's about, like, your past, um, things that you like. So in our dates, on our dates, we would just go through this. I think it's like 150 cards or something like that. We would just go through that deck of cards and just talk about it. We probably maybe do at least one from I think it was like five sections, like one from each section every time. Yeah. So we got to know each other a lot through that. Uh, so when people be like, "Oh my gosh, like you guys met in April of 2020 and you were married in October of 2022," 
we always say like we're dark darking <laughs> dating mm. <laughs> dating in dog years because we felt like so much happened in a short amount of time yeah and it's because we really got to know each other like unplug no phones we couldn't go on like true dates or like outings that were distracting because yeah. even if we went out to eat we would just bring it in the car yeah it was straight <laughs> straight talk that's it yeah i mean right. i guess a couple of times we might have watched like something like power or something on the laptop but oh, for yeah, the most part it that. was it was all straight talk but one way um i will say one way that we connected was um one as she mentioned the cards really getting to know each other um, and I felt like that was important because those cards did ask questions uh, a lot about your past. So in doing that, we got to understand each other's like, uh, like some of like maybe maybe past traumas, uh, things that we enjoy. Because, you know, at this time we can't go do the things we enjoy. So she can't tell me like, hey, I like, I don't know, axe throwing. <laughs> That's random. I do want to do axe throwing. I've yeah. been talking about it. Yeah, so... We've never actually done that, but um, she couldn't tell me that, and then we go do it. So these cards helped us just figure figure each other out. Um, but another way we connected um, was through laughter, hence the name uh, Love is Funny. She, she really was, like, um, one of very few girls I've ever met. The only other few girls I've met that, like, have made me laugh are, like, my, like, true friends of mine that I've never even thought about dating or they they're like married to like my friends like it's only like a couple of girls who I can say that girl is funny right she was the first girl that I got to like date that uh could make me laugh I'm so used to like making other people laugh she was making me laugh uh just as much as, or probably more than I was making her laugh because she was not trying to let me know it's hard to make me laugh no, she, she wasn't just laughing she was I had to make literally make her laugh so but we connected over that because she had the same like uh like wit and like she could keep up with me I, like i think that you could keep up with me at the beginning of this podcast y'all seen it it's on tape you wanted me to go first because i'm your husband i'm supposed to lead you and that so but everybody so, knows it's really the wife that runs the house and she just lets her husband be in the front that's why we're not doing this at the house so um Ew. Should have kept your phone. Now you're oh, going to have a bum bum. Because other people be talking. Oh, yeah, you're right. But yeah, so so she was, a, you know, we was able to, our, our humor matched. And uh, yeah, so that was like one of the first ways we connected. We even had a conversation when we were first texting each other. Like, yo, I talk a lot of trash. And she like, well, I talk a lot of trash. And like, well, we going to see who fold first. We used to keep score. I was always winning. Notice how there's a theme here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, needless to say, ain't nobody folded yet. We still here. Uh, I don't know what the score is now. I got to be up. Because I, I just got to be. That's that's just what it is. But yeah, that's how we... Um, to see. That's, how, that's pretty much how we connected. And then I guess fast forward to, you know, all the way to marriage. And this where we at. Um, yeah, and people have been asking us like, "How is it being married?" And we're like, "The same." Literally the same. <laughs> but maybe it's because like we did live together before, because like he can't go nowhere. I'd be like, "Where are you going, you?" <laughs> Where? Are you? But yeah, so we lived together before. Um, I already started because of the cards. You know, I think it talk. I don't know if it talks about finances on there, but. We've had all those conversations. The cards helped us so much, and we try to communicate. And if y'all, well, I guess y'all don't know me, but like, I'm in my head always thinking about things, planning. And so I'm like, we need to do this, this, and this, or talk about this, this, and that, because it's important to be just like honest. Like, I learned in past relationships that I'm just gonna be me, and I'm gonna talk about things that bother me, or things that I like, or things that I don't like. And so we've just always had good really good communication so much so that even when we went to um, marriage counseling the pastor was like y'all answers are too good <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but we had a lot of practice so. yeah and one thing one more thing that i will say we mentioned uh you know we mentioned that we're going to be talking about the lord on here from time to time as well 
uh, one thing that stood out uh, with her also in the like in the very beginning was because, you know, how else do I say this? She just jumped in in the middle of my little hoe phase I was trying <laughs> to have. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to be a player, but she came up in here and she, uh, you know what I'm saying? She just, you just crushing a lot. I was trying to be a player. I, see, I had a response for that, but <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I was doing a lot of a lot of stuff I shouldn't have been doing, like when I met her and things like that. But one thing that made her stand out above the rest of these people that I had interacted with was um, not only the the like the higher level of conversation we would have just about, like she said, like finances or like real life stuff. Um, it was it was things like I remember one day she got in the car and she told me uh, just in casual conversation she was like whatever da 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 whatever and then she said yeah and then I was praying for you last night and blah 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 the reason I say blah 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 is because I stopped that and I and I prayed for you last night I was like wait a second ain't nobody ever told me specifically nobody I'm dating ever told me that they prayed for me to me that was like a different level of like care. That means like before. Really, that, I was just trying to make sure I wasn't wasting my time. I had to go through God and ask, "Is this nigga the one?" Can I say nigga? I even say a nigga. It, oh, again, the same not. way you could drink water, you could say nigga. It's your podcast. Yeah. So let these niggas uh, know. Sorry. I was not about to be wasting my time, especially because I was like, "Ew, I'm not." When I had came back to Bakersfield, ooh, do we tell people where we live? Wait, you better make sure you're talking into the mic because <coughs> I got these headphones <coughs> on and I cannot hear you. People can, can know where you we hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. What was I saying? Uh, you was about to tell them how when you moved back to Bakersfield. Oh, yeah. I was like, ew, I'm not going to find anybody. <laughs> 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 so I had to pray. Pray about it and make sure, like, this wasn't a fluke. Because you know when you pray for something, the devil can hear you, too. And he'll try to send you somebody. And you'd be like, is this gold or is it glitter? So I had to pray to make sure he was gold. What was it, baby? Was it was it gold or was it white gold? But okay. same thing. Okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. cool. <laughs> nah, but again, like she said, she thought she wasn't gonna find nobody in Bakersfield. But you know, what I'm saying, like I told y'all, like I told y'all about the game earlier. You feel me? It's just levels to it. With that, you wanted to talk about you know like saying? things that we yeah overcame or yeah. Whatever. So that that was gonna be my next question, but I, but you know, what I'm saying you reminded me about the game I had. You know, what I'm saying about me being a little. You know what I mean? How I had to really like, or how about I just be reading your mind? How I really had to like bag you for real, like you really made me work, and you know what I'm saying, and that's what I did. I went to work. You feel me? Um, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, at the same time, you was gaming me too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, I fell in love fast. You feel me? Let me see. You know what I'm saying, how could I not? You feel me? But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? If a dove is gonna fly, then why would a chicken continue to walk? You feel me? That chicken should fly too. And that's what I did. Hi. Are you just starting a podcast but don't have any sponsors, ads, or commercials? Well, so are we. That's why we decided to make our own. Yeah, so like we didn't really know what to do. It was like, who about to help us out? Who about to pay for this? Who about to pay us? What we about to do, right? But then we were like, you know what? Why don't we just make our own? Because they say if you teach a man to fish, you can eat forever. So we taught we taught ourselves how to fish, and now we're eating us. Boom! Here we are. Yeah, man. Like she uh, said, sir, we was we sir, was sir, looking sir, for sir, it. Sir, sir, sir. You still got the shirt? The advertising man shirt. You thought the hat was gonna make a difference? I, I thought they wouldn't like notice, yeah. Well now you know you blew they blew, you blew our whole cover. We we make our own commercials. Take it off. The off hat or the, the hat or the shirt. Both. Probably both, huh? So, like you were saying, we was gonna we was gonna talk about because they want to know, like, oh, y'all relationship can't just be perfect. So it's not. Do you see that? So because dang, 
I, just, I was just going to ask, what are some things that we had to, what are some <laughs> things that I'll say you and then I'll answer. What are some things you had to overcome with dating me? What were the things that like gave you cause to pause or that you didn't like or that bothered you? What were some difficulties we might have faced from April 17, 2020 to October 17, 2022? That's the anniversary, you feel me? Okay, so we're going to be completely honest. We got to be. That's why we got on here. Make yeah. sure you're talking into the mic, too. So I feel like you. I am. I know when you move, you get out of it. <clears throat> but go ahead. Okay, so completely honest. Wait, time out. First of all, y'all, some of these things she might say, I don't know what she's going <laughs> to say. Some of these things she might say, we already didn't have to argue about. Uh, what else? I already didn't heard it. Um, we can just go. But go ahead, go ahead. Tell I was like, we can go back and forth on a timeline because I was just gonna start the very beginning. No, you, you you go ahead, and then if I need to jump in, I'll jump in. You feel me? But yeah, so like I said, I had to pray about him at first because before I met him, I was trying to date like, oh, I don't care about height and looks. Like you know, you make your list, which you care about what's like absolute yes, absolute no, then. I realize I do care about looks because when I get mad at somebody, I'm like, oh, get your short or you're ugly. Anyway, so I had to be like, bow, bow. He's like very attractive to me, like almost too attractive to where I felt like it's unfair. But anyways, so I really liked how he looked. So I would always be thinking like, do I like you or do I just like how you look? Because some things about him that I was like, ooh, me being you know, the older 20 something year old I was then I was like, okay, I graduated college. I worked, I did this. I've been, you know, building this portfolio for my life. I want to date someone that's, you know, you're equal. So him not going to college or not finishing college or having like a, I was going to say, cause I went, I, was I, say, not I even showed necessarily, up. Not even to like the college part, but just like in your career or at least, a career building to one. So I'll be like, ooh, oh no. Right. Um, and then having children, because I'm like, I don't have kids. I'll be like, I don't have kids. I saved my blah, 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 and whatever. Although I don't, I didn't mind dating somebody with kids because I also looked at it as like a cheat code. Because it's like, if I see you, uh, you know, with your children and taking care of them, you know, I'm like, okay, you'll do the same for my kids, hopefully. Or, you know, that just shows a lot about the person. So the kids wasn't so iffy, but I was like, two, oh God, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, two, but they were from the same person. And, you know, they were, like I said, engaged at one point. So I was like, okay, you know, but I didn't want to be like, uh, am I just making excuses because I like the way he looks? But initially, in the very beginning, those were some things that I had to, you know, get past. Because I'm like, I'm trying to retire at 35, which is not too late. I ain't trying to work. Hmm. But, yeah, so I got past those quick because probably after the first first time we hung out, our first date, I sent this, like... I'm not going to tell y'all what it said, but this message where I was just like, I just felt God had was like, chill back on all that extra stuff that you're talking about. And so at that point, I kind of just like let all those, I don't want to say requirements, but what would you say those are? Just like uh, ideas? I or? guess I, I guess ideas. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for you, but yeah, ideas. We'll say that. What society had told you you should be looking for. Yeah. But I did know that, like, I wanted to be with somebody who I could really get along with, who I could talk to, best friends. And it's like, he, and I think I said it in my vows, I was like, you are everything that I could ask for and the things I didn't know that I needed, you know? So, like, the things that I thought in the beginning were like, oh, should I... Like, or nothing. Because, like, one thing is, like, money comes and goes. Like, your job can come and go. Relationships can come and go. But, like, that, like, a true bond that you build with somebody, like, I would live in a box with this person, with him, you know. And it's, like, that bond that we have, that friendship, that love that we have, that's 
I don't feel like that can come and go. So when you feel like, for me, like if you get that part that you feel like you can't come and go, then that's the person you got to be with. Yeah. So everybody else could like, scurry on. Yeah. So for me, the difficulties I faced in the beginning were <laughs> actually my own. It was not anything that Janelle did. I was about to say, what? <laughs> yeah. It was not anything that Janelle did. So as she said, again, being full, fully transparent on here, you know what I mean? As she said, I was engaged before. And that was like um, from high school. It was like nine years. But I had been, I would have been with her since high school. So this is my first time being single as an adult. So I thought that the correct way to move was to be very intentional about my uh, wholeness. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I thought it was important to, like, you know, have fun, um, date as many people as you would like, do all these things that, again, uh, maybe, I don't, I don't want to keep blaming things on society, but you're told, like, hey, man, you need to get out and live life. You know, go to the club, even though that's, you know, not naturally you. Although there were times where I did have fun at the club, but... Uh, that wasn't like my natural state. These are all things I had to intent. I was intentionally doing when I met her. So the difficulty for me when I met her was all of a sudden coming to a screeching halt and doing all these things because, like I said earlier, I knew just b- like just based on like who I had met, who I had talked to, interacted with, whatever. I knew that this one right here was my wife, and that is because. She came in here being a wife. I told him to read Proverbs 31. Yeah, but that's not what made you a wife. <laughs> that was you trying to flex on me. Like, go read this. It's about me. Hurry up. Go. <laughs> go. Did you read it? <laughs> okay. Did you did you did you read it? Did, did it remind make sure you could comprehend? <laughs> you said, did you read it? Did it remind you of anybody? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll wait. Like, so <laughs> but she came in being a wife. And when I say that, I mean like, um, all these things she named, like, yes, I had the children. I wasn't about to change. But the 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 career stuff, I was I was building my career. A, a career, you know, society, again, tells you what a career looks like. And usually they're telling you it's a nine-to-five type of thing unless you have an NBA career, NFL career, a, a movie career that's already seen by the public. But until then, these things are just a hobby. To me, I was already building my career. But my career had not taken off. And it still has not fully taken off. It's better than it was when I met her. But my career, again, stand-up comedy, acting, modeling these things that, um, you know, that I know that I'm going to be doing, right? So um, when I say she came in being a wife, although these things were concerns, she still never uh, fully expressed the concern. She always supported me. And she always challenged me, which was very important because everybody, you know, especially in the very beginning of you doing something, everybody is like, oh, you're so funny. But that's it. Oh, you, you know, whatever, surface level things. But she would, she would challenge me in a way where I was like, hey, I think that, I think your stage presence could be better. Um, I'm not, t- I, I, I'm saying, I, I'm saying I want to do modeling, but I'm not taking pictures. She's like, why are you not taking pictures? No, you need to be taking pictures. And then in the middle of the night, we'll be sending me like modeling agencies. Like I'll wake up to like a whole bunch of modeling agencies being sent to me that she just wouldn't find her own. I didn't ask her to do any of this. So her support wasn't one that was like a cheerleader. Her support was one that was like a push for me. And again, she she never was afraid to challenge me, even when the conversation got uncomfortable and I wanted to argue. She always she Are always ready? She always kept uh, kept challenging me. So uh, that's why I say she came in being a wife. But again, I was not a husband yet. I had to grow into that. And again, she helped me grow into that just by talking to me about, you know, getting me to read like the Bible and getting me to, you know, she was uh, she was like, I don't know. I always say she saw the she she uh she saw my potential and she she I pushed that out of me. Start singing Marvin Sapp. <laughs> no, nah. yeah, but, but yeah, she put she pushed the potential up out me, and now you know what I'm saying today, I ain't gonna say I'm all the way there, baby, but it's on the way. You know? Yeah, and so it doesn't sound like I'm so perfect, and he was the problem. He 
has accepted a lot of my personality areas that could be better. So like he has taught me more. He's well, I'm not saying taught me. So what I would think that he put up with me of more me being impatient, put up with me being pessimistic, um, my overanalyzing, doubtful self. Um, because he's saying, like, yeah, I'm pushing him, I'm pushing him, but on the same side, I'm also like, yeah, you know, um. but he has, I said that he's been patient with me. And even, like, he says, I was already a wife. There were some things that, like, I think I've gotten better at because when we first met, I couldn't even say the word commitment. I was like, oh my God. That's why, like, everybody's so shocked I'm even married because I was like, I'm not only getting married and you date one person. I, my yeah, relationships but, don't last long. And, and not to interrupt, but those things go back to what I've been saying. It's the game, baby. You feel me? You just got to have a certain level. Of, you know what I'm saying? When you just that type of dude, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you take them from, you know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, baby. But um, love is not boast. So I'm shut not, up. I'm not. I'm not boasting. It's kind of what that is. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit. I'm, I'm just speaking yeah. facts at this point. So, and then just on the timeline of things, how we even got to here? Because I battle with myself a lot because, and maybe it's a woman thing or just a me thing. Because it's like, okay, this person is this, but they're not giving you that. So like he said, he was still like in his whole face. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, we we literally said I love you like two, probably two months in. So we didn't become official to like a whole year later. Yeah. So, so time out. That is why when you tell me you are not patient, you're not patient day to day. But you, she gave me a lot of patience in the beginning. But you know, but that's where I'm saying where I battle with myself, and during the time you didn't see the battle it was kind of like after that's so why we kind of argued a lot I guess, but it was like okay I like this person I love this person this person loves me but yet it's he's telling me all this he's showing me all this but yet he's not doing this. So I feel like as women, we sometimes want to hold on to the good thing about a man and ignore kind of like the red flags. So I don't really know if I, no, I don't say that. I don't regret staying around, but I feel like I didn't speak up enough of like, hey, bro, let's make some moves. Like, what are we doing for it to come to like? A whole year later, not we've talked about it. And I guess, like, if y'all care, we can talk about it some more. Hmm. Just being like the honest part of us, but yeah, I struggle with that because then I'd be like, I would get mad because. But we'd have this thing where it's like, well, everybody know we not together, we not together, we not together. Yes, y'all are together in a sense. Like, if you're telling me I love you, we dang near halfway live together, like. The writing's on the wall, but people like to use certain words. So, I will I will say as a guy, and this could be a teaching moment for uh, the, the men that may be going through this. Uh, always put yourself in the other person's shoes, because I not only learned that with her, I learned it well through talking with her, but with other girls as well. Um, where, yes, you can be saying this, saying I don't want a girlfriend or I don't want to be in a relationship or, you know, in the case of us, yeah, I love you, but, you know, I'm not ready to be, you know, your your boyfriend yet, whatever. In real time, these things feel justified. But once you, like, mature and you get to hear her t- speak and uh, you talk through these things, you realize you were doing it wrong the whole time because although your your words are saying one thing, your action by, um, you know, being around her even or, you know, laying up with her, uh, like she said, telling her I love her, which I did, but I was not. Um, those things are confusing a woman. So in a woman's mind, in all of our minds, we all are a little bit, uh, 
optimistic in that way or maybe maybe for some people it's arrogant or they feel like they you know i can change his mind um or eventually his mind will change if i just keep doing this just keep and so out loud she's telling you yeah no, no i get it like it's fine if, if i'm not your um you know, I understand you don't want a girlfriend. They might even say, you know, I don't want a boyfriend either. We just chilling, da da da. All these things, but the whole time, they're developing these feelings. That Most are, girls think they can change your mind. Exactly. They like play cool, like okay, and then they like sneak attack. But again, the same way guys have game, girls got game too. So she knows, she knows that. Well, dang, he's telling me he don't want a girlfriend. I do like him, but if I press him, that could push him away. I don't want to push right. him away. So let me just keep, you know, remain in this role. And then when he's ready, I'm going to be the one he chooses. And that's not always going to be the case because I did that to some other people. And clearly I chose Janelle, which that was not fair to those other people either. So um, just be just let it like let it be what it's going to be. If you just want to, you know, and we maybe on a later episode, we'll get to like the whole sex conversation. But if y'all just having sex, like limited to that like let her know that's what it is i can't come uh people respect honesty like honesty through your actions and your words like let everything line up because if your words are saying one thing and your actions are saying something else that's not even though you're being honest you're still but that's not congruent that's where the, that's where it's important to put yourself in the other person's shoes because to you to you your actions are not what this is not how I would treat a girlfriend. I could come over your house and let you cook for me and I could even spend a night a time or two. But if you was my girlfriend, I would be doing like all these extra things. So to you you're not doing like making her f- you think you're not making her feel like your girlfriend or making her feel these feelings cuz you think you holding her at an arm's distance, but really in her mind you providing her with so much hope and you are making her like you you giving her too much conversation. And in my case, like, you know, I might be making you laugh. All these things to make her like you. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you got to be real careful with that. I'll say two things. So my advice would be, if nobody asks, but I'm going to give it, is that have those conversations early. So we sit here and talk about how much you communicate and you communicate and you communicate. There are some things that I did not communicate, such as that situation. But I, w- I would say, like, you know, I'm being patient because I understood he was in a long relationship most of his life. I understood, you know, be single, especially because, like, how we were, we've been talking about being married. So it was like, last thing I wanted you to do is let me get to marry you, and then you do some stupid stuff. Talk about, oh, I just needed to, you know, live my best life. So I was I was granting him time. Oh, my voice sucker. I was granting him time and trying to have patience with him so that he can, like, make sure this is what he wants or still like do whatever. But it was still hard thinking like, well, I love this person or we're this close. And he's still sliding in DMs, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he will say he didn't do things. And in my mind, he did. And that's what matters. But, you know, as long as I can get over it. But, yeah, so... That's why I would say one thing I would wish I did was communicate like this is what this looks like to me. This is what I'm feeling. This is how I'm trying to be so we can kind of like be on more coordinates. Because if I told him like a year later, oh, yeah, like this really hurt me. He's like, oh, well, I didn't know. And so sometimes, like you said, you got to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. But sometimes you can't put yourself in somebody else's shoes without asking them how I feel to walk in their shoes. So he could be like, oh, well, yeah, I guess that would be. if that." Because after the fact, he could be like, oh, yeah, that could be. But in the time, you could think about, let me think about how she feels. But I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but I'm not, you know. So you can put yourself in somebody's shoes but still not understand to what they they feel because two people can have two different interpretations of action. Yeah. So it's just very important to just communicate and talk about that, which we did. It worked out like a year after, but. Yeah. And also don't, again, y'all might hear me bring up this a lot. (laughs) Uh, Don't worry about what society tells you. Because, again, my in my mind, because I was in such a long relationship and I met her a short, I met her 
four months after the long relationship ended. In my mind, I'm supposed to be taking my time and like dating and having fun and all these things before, because it did not take me, so it took me a year to make her my girlfriend, but it took me like a week to know she was my wife, which makes no sense. But in in real time or at that time, it made all the sense in the world where it's like, because I know I'm gonna marry her, uh, my fear is that I'm not out of this phase, so I'm going to, like, get with her, and then I'm going to make a mistake. So to avoid the mistake, let me, like, do her, you know, do do it this way. And that way was the wrong way, which I now know. But at the time, you feel like all your actions are justified, and really they're not. So Because yeah, I would tell him, like, I let you have your cake and eat it, too. I let you be this single person, but I also let you be this playhouse with me, you know. So everybody's situation is different. Like I said, I don't know if I regret to say I regret what I have looked back and maybe tried to do things differently. I don't know. But I would tell him, like, you know, you having your cake and you eating it, too. But then it just takes the one person, you know, like even when people cheat, somebody, it takes the one person to be strong for a person in a relationship. Because not all the time are you both going to be strong in any in illness, health, rich, poor, like Val say, like. You're not always going to be on the same page. So sometimes it just takes that one person to be like committed. And then because the other person might want to. Yeah. I can't to bring really speak it, for cheating. But. To bring it full circle, though, um, as much as those things might have uh, been a negative, they have turned to be a positive because in having that experience and other experiences, we have grown to a point where uh, we communicate things that bother us right away. We don't have to wait for she don't gotta wait for me to ask her or I don't wait for, gotta wait for her to ask me if something bothers whether it's big or small, we just go ahead and say it so we don't have this problem of um letting things build up and then we want to blow up later. We just get it out the way right away and these are all just basic communication things that you guys probably have heard already. We did not expect it to go in this direction fully, but again, we get y'all getting to know us, so we want y'all to know the good, the bad, and the ugly out the gate. So we ain't got to come back to this. You feel me? People be mad and I be like, y'all think y'all so perfect. No, we don't. Yeah, people, they think that we just have had a We flawless. just blessed. Yeah, that's it. But, you know, yeah, people would think we have a flawless. And, but we try to be honest with everything because we have friends that are dating and things like that. And we're not going to sugarcoat nothing or paint you no perfect picture. Yeah. Although Tupac once said... Picture perfect. I paint a perfect picture. Diamond. Do what do you what do you say after that? Something about getting richer. Okay, and a Kool Aid pitcher. And uh, 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 thirst quencher. Gatorade. Is it in you? No, I don't particularly like Gatorade. Powerade. Is it out of you? Is that their slogan? What is Powerade's? Never mind. But yeah, that's that's uh most of our story. Uh do we have anything else we wanna we wanna discuss? I guess I don't know, what else what else we got for him today? Do we have anything else? We got a few more minutes left. I would say just to like wrap up because we even getting married, we did not I guess expect this soon. Cause we would be like, Oh, I told him he got to twenty twenty three, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I told him 2023 because I would be like three years because I'm I'm not getting old. But when you're adults and you're kind of like living your life, I don't necessarily personally, I don't necessarily believe in dating somebody for like five, six, seven, ten years, especially like when you're living with that person. But I'm more of on the spiritual side where I believe in marriage. So people that don't believe in marriage, that's, you know, whatever. That's on them. One thing I was consistent with, though, when I first met her, I told her, the next girl that's my girlfriend, I'm marrying her. That's it. Yeah, he did say that. And so that is why, yes, it took me a year to make her my girlfriend, but it took me less than a year to propose to her and make her my, uh, you know, well, was it less than a year? Anyway, we had two years now. She's already my wife. So 
I did take a while to get started, but once I got started, we were started. And that is because she mentioned like five, six, seven years. Um, I don't even think that that is too long for, depending on your relationship, just like I don't think five, six, or seven months or five, six, or seven weeks or whatever is too soon to marry somebody. It's all based on your own timeline. Again, I'm going to mention it again. Society tells you that there are particular timelines where we're supposed to be doing things. So I may have felt like I wanted to marry her, you know, six months into knowing her, but society told me, boy, you tripping. You got to wait, you know, three years, five years, get to know her when really, like she told you, we sat in the car for six to eight hours a day getting to know each other. I know her enough already. I think I look, when I think about five, six, ten years, like, is it when you're like you're in high school or you're going through college and you're like you're trying to establish your life? But I look at it like, tell people like, what are you waiting for in that time? Because it's like, are you waiting for the person to change? Because the person's gonna change. You don't know when, but people will change. Uh, and marriage is the commitment to that, to ride those waves, the, to change. But what we, like I said, we did talk about getting married in November. I mean, not November, but 2023. But we ended up this year, or 2022, depending on what year you watch this. But one thing, because we decided, like, what will we be waiting for? So, yeah, we got engaged in May of 2022, and then we're married in October 2022. Because we were just like, what are we waiting for? Like, we're committed to the change in us that will happen. Uh, We don't feel like we will grow out of or change out of love we think that what the one thing that is consistent with us is the love you know you'll have your highs and your lows you know like I told him I was like I will always love you even when I don't like you yeah you know but I think that's because like I said I look at a more spiritual thing and it's like God loves us through all the bad things that we do sinning against him all the time and he still loves us so if you have a love for that person and you love them naked or clothed, then I'm like, what are you kind of waiting for? Yeah. I guess, you know, that's Uncon- a bad thing to say. Because some people might look at this that are single and be like, do you love me naked or clothed? Do you not love me? <laughs> he gonna be like, that. He gonna, I definitely love you naked, baby. So yeah. I'm not, we are not here to like, to be a measure to anybody's relationship. Everybody basically <laughs> just do you. And Take then, this as a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, do you and don't let it don't let nobody else tell you, you know what I'm saying? Do what I did. I, I was the dude that was like, I had the white girl from Scary Movie screaming right here, like, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? And then I was the dude on the bill, like, what am I waiting for? And then I jumped. Yeah. Splash. So, Cause we could have a conversation with somebody who's taking their time and waiting. And I'm always curious to, you know, like, well, what makes you wait, you know? But I will say this. Again, the time in the car we had, not being able to do anything else, not being able to be distracted. But, like, a date is a a distraction, too. We go to the movies. We can't really talk about much. If we go skating and it's playing music, we can't really talk about much. If Mm -hmm. we, a lot of things we do, we go act strong like we want to. There's not a bunch of conversation in that. So, we had the advantage. I feel like our process was expedited by having to sit in a car with nothing to do. I guess we could listen to music if we'd like, but, you know, that gets old. You, 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 know? you talk more. So I do believe that for those who may be taking their time, that may take three years to get to know each other, the pandemic kind of gave us an advantage um, in getting to know each other because we could only sit and yeah. speak. And just to say, like, just being true to who you are, like, that's one thing that I admire about him because I feel like I'm the same. Like, you can't really get me to drink. You can't really get me to do anything I don't want to do. And he's the same way. So we're just always our true selves. And in a time like this where social media is so, like, be somebody else, I think that can be what kind of puts hold on people, but also being caught up in society's measures so like we said like society tells you this this and that society tells you that that and that but it's like what is true to you and like I said even doing those cards it was self-therapy for me at least you got to say it out loud to somebody. yeah so it's like saying your problems out loud 
really help. That's why they say therapy helps. So if you're not a person, I know like black people, we don't often think about going to get help. And I know it's a lot higher focus on it now. Even just buying those therapy cards, because like I said, there's a lot on Amazon. Just talk yourself through them, because a lot of times the pe- the problems that people have in relationships is the individual person, not the yeah. other person. And I'm gonna give y'all some real game right now. You feel me? And I'm not I'm not talking about the kind of game I gave you when my voice get low. I know your voice. Didn't some real game. Ew, has sleep. <laughs> but um, people are oftentimes embarrassed about like because uh, as she said with the cards, you get to it's almost like therapy a little bit because you get to say it out loud. People oftentimes are embarrassed to say it out loud, particularly to somebody who they like or are interested in because you fear judgment. Um, the correct person, you should be able to say all your traumas out loud. And as she said, they're going to love you naked. And, and sometimes find the things that you find most embarrassing or most unattractive about yourself. They're going to find that to be the most beautiful thing about you. And by opening up and explaining your traumas to people out the gate, like don't be embarrassed. It not only helps you, but it helps them understand how to how to handle you with uh, whatever type of care they need to handle you with. So if you, it, so for instance, not to put t- people too far into, you know, our, her business, but she has, there's a reason um, that she explained to me why she does not like when uh, people do not answer the phone for her when she's calling them, people that she cares about. So for me understanding that, I have never once got upset if she calls me and I don't answer and she's blowing me up, I've never once looked at it like, man, why are you blowing me up? If I don't answer the phone, then I'm busy. Obviously, that I never got mad because very early she explained to me like, yeah, this is one of the traumas that I have with this. So um, has she never explained that to me? I might respond differently. Um, but that's just like a small example. So don't be afraid to open up to people and let them get to know you because then that is how you will be dealt with correctly. Because now you're sitting here frustrated because you have these traumas and somebody is not catering to or being understanding of why you're even like this because you never even told him. So now he's just sitting there thinking you just like crazy when you're not. Yeah. But we've been on here for a while. So and we didn't expect it to go this way, like he said. So we'll get off. Um, hopefully, but yeah, we promise y'all we gonna have some fun. You feel me? <laughs> y'all had to, uh, y'all had to learn about us, understand why we. You really, we didn't mean to get so emotional. Is what we saying? Like we really, we really gonna be on here having fun. We're like not always as deep. We are very, not that serious of people. Yeah, yeah, at all. So, uh, yeah, so we gonna we gonna be on here. We are gonna be discussing, uh, like we said, current events. You know what I'm saying? You want to discuss the current event right now? Kanye West. That's that's that was our current event. That's it. But um, I must say I don't know anything. Somebody somebody asked me about Kanye West. What's the deal with him today? I was like, I you was know. like, didn't uh graduation just drop or college dropout late night? Mm-hmm. What do you got? He got one. Do you got one late night regist? I don't know. That might be somebody else. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, we are gonna get to the current events. We're gonna get to. We're going to be talking about everything. So we sit on it and don't be afraid to, uh, you know, message one of us and send us, um, you know, we'll be posting questions and things like that. Whatever. We're going to, we're going to, you know what I'm saying? This going to be here forever, hopefully. This is something we've been wanting to do, something that means a lot to us. So we just want y'all to rock with us and we're going to, you know what I'm saying? We look forward to, if we don't know you already, getting to know y'all. And And I'm going to say this for the haters because even Jesus had haters. We don't care. (laughs) Straight like that. You heard me? Yeah, we're not going to go kill ourselves. And another thing, next time y'all pull up on us tripping, you heard me? Stop, because somebody will pull up on us tripping. Hey, and look, hey, when they do, though, guess what we going to get what? Guess what? We're going to be covered in the blood of Jesus because that's the only thing that's going to save us. Get what? We apologize. Cause one thing, one thing oh, I ain't okay, finna no. do. Cause one thing I ain't finna do, I ain't finna run. Cause best believe I'm in the car. I'm driving off. Or you got a zigzag. You can zigzag, or the tail oh wag. Oh my gosh, let's cut it off with the grocery it's been, bag. It's been too my much. My pants don't sag. It's been too much. It's been enough. 
getting money like Mr. Krabs. Boss man, cut the camera thingy. But yeah, so look, uh, before y'all get up out of here, look, please uh, do us a favor and like this video. What they be? What we got to say? Because we knew that it's YouTube. I have no idea. I don't watch YouTube. We got to like, share, subscribe, um, <laughs> retweet, put it on your story. I don't know. This, that's not YouTube. YouTube got stories. I don't know. I just got an email from YouTube saying you can change your YouTube handle. Well, I don't even know what mine is. But yeah, just uh, go ahead and do all of that. Um, we will be on here. Y'all could, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe I'm saying this. You want to tell them your social media. I've been not sliding her DM <laughs> as y'all just find. Look, I'm tripping. You feel me? So, but go ahead and give them your social media um, and all that. Mine is I am Nelly B I A M N E L L E Y E Y B. Yeah, you feel me? I feel like that was a little cracky. Sorry for my voice. I'm Nelly B. Yeah, and uh, mine is this is underscore DJ TV. You feel me? And yeah, y'all make sure y'all follow us and all that. And most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Um, we're going to be bringing podcasts. Maybe one day we'll grow up as little uh, YouTubers and we'll start to do some other things. Uh, maybe some vlogging. Maybe some uh, she, she, you know what I'm saying? She like fashion and stuff. So maybe we might start dressing better or something <laughs> and showing y'all some stuff. I'm not good with fashion. I got on leopard. Nike. <laughs> you got on leopard, which is cool. As long as you ain't lying and you ain't no cheetah. Ooh, it, I did. It. I don't need you to ask me if I did, got did it. Did you get it? Cause like a, we be here. I did. Okay. okay, that's time to go. All right, bye, bye guys. We'll see y'all next time. Like Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs>